Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you because you invited us as a children to the family so we can hear your word, know your mind, and have your revelation in every heart as well as every family. We're asking, Lord, that your word will profit everyone in Jesus' name. And you will not leave us where you met us. Enlighten saints today and prepare us for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. I will pray your word will do good in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church shout. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48, I read from verse 17. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, then at thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Whenever we come to the presence of God, and the Lord decides to speak to us and he teaches us himself. He tells us the reason and the purpose why he speaks, why he reveals, and why he teaches us the word. Look at that verse 17. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit. When you read the word, when you hear the word, when you learn the word, when you pay attention to what the Lord is saying, it says he has one purpose in your life, is to make you profit by the word that he teaches. And then he said in verse 18, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto my commandments, then the peace in their heart the peace in their home, the peace in the church, the peace in the assembly of the saints should have been like a river and thy righteousness will be as the waves of the sea. It says our righteousness will be visible like the waves of the sea are visible. The righteousness that comes through salvation and the deep righteousness that comes through sanctification it says it will be so visible and it will be so high that people will see that righteousness as the waves of the sea it teaches us to profit I pray you'll profit by the teaching of the Lord in Psalm 81. Psalm 81. I'm reading from verse 13. Psalm 81. Verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Looks like those children of Israel, the majority of them, their assemblies did not listen to the Lord. That's why the Lord said, if they had only listened, if they had only paid attention, if they had only hearkened unto my word, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord shall have submitted themselves unto him, but their time 
shall have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. The Lord says when we come before him and he reveals his might unto us and he teaches us his word. He says, if we will hack him, if we will listen, if we will embrace, if we will believe, if we will determine to do as the Lord commands, he says, he will give us honey out of the rock. For the obedient, for the submissive, for the consecrated, for the yielded, for the people that will not deviate to the right or deviate to the left, but will be in obedience to the word of the Lord that he teaches, there will be honey out of the rock. In Isaiah chapter 54, Isaiah chapter 54, reading from verse 13, All thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. When you are taught only by man, when you see what you hear as coming from a man, when you receive what you are hearing as just the words of man, there's not much benefit and there's not much profit. But when you open your heart and open your mind that God himself will teach you, there's going to be a great profit and a great advantage. It says, all thy children, all the followers of Christ, all the people who are born again and born into the kingdom by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, all thy children, it says, shall be taught of the Lord. And you can tell when somebody has not been taught of the Lord. When you question him or question her, you'll say, they say, we shouldn't do that. They said we shouldn't go that direction. They, Im they imposed on us this doctrine or this teaching. They have not been taught by the Lord. When you are taught by the Lord, you know that the Lord has spoken to you. When he talks about repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know that he's coming from the Lord. When he reveals to you the way of salvation and the way of righteousness and you receive that word as from the Lord and you bend the knee and you bow before him and you surrender your life unto him, there is a change, a heavenly change that takes place. You have been taught of the Lord and then he says, Great shall the peace of thy children be. In righteousness shall thou be established. When you are taught of the Lord, righteousness will be established in your life. It will not be like members around, so don't, let's go that way now. When the members of the church go, then we can be at liberty to do whatever we want to do. Those ones are not taught of the Lord. Those ones are churchgoers. They just come to church. They do not have the transforming power and the righteous power of the Lord working in them. When you are taught of the Lord, in righteousness shall thou be established, and thou shalt be far from oppression. Nobody will be able to oppress you. Nobody will be able to oppress me. I'm talking about myself. I said nobody will be able to oppress me. I'll be flying on the wings of the eagle. When you are taught of the Lord, and the Lord takes his word, and he applies it to your heart, he says, you'll be far from oppression. In your family, there'll be no oppression. At school, there'll be no oppression. When the bullies are around, 
But the people that want to kind of put some things down your throat wants to say no, they have to stop. Because you'll be far from oppression. On our streets, you'll be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. I didn't hear your amen. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. When you are taught of the Lord, and He teaches you to profit by the word, there'll be no oppression, there'll be no terror. It says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. If you see any conspiracy against you, the Almighty God said, I've been teaching you to profit. That's not the purpose I raised you up. That conspiracy is not of me. It will not stand. Yeah. That evil is not coming from the Lord. It will not stand. Yeah. That sickness is not coming from the Lord. It will not kill you. That oppression, that attack, affliction is not coming from the Lord. It will not affect your destiny. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, whosoever, whatever their title, whosoever, whatever their society, whosoever, whatever their power, whosoever, wherever they are coming from, whosoever shall gather against you shall fall for thy sake. Verse 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me, says the Lord. When the Lord teaches you to profit, that's what will happen. Blessings upon blessings. Wonder upon wonder. Promotion upon promotion. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration. God is the author of the Bible. The Holy Ghost is the author of the scriptures. And when the one who wrote the scriptures, who gave the scriptures by inspiration, when he himself teaches you, it's like our children who go to school. Uh, you know, a teacher is trying to teach, uh, you know, the subject. And he's, uh, you know, trying hard. But some of the children, they say, I don't understand. I can't get it. Then the teacher tries again. Do you now all understand? Teacher, I'm sorry, I don't understand. But there's somebody from the Ministry of Education, and he's been you know, appointed as a commissioner. And he happened to have written the book that you are studying at school. And he decides to visit the schools and he gets to this school. And the teacher happens to be teaching from his textbook. And so he says, excuse me, let me uh, spend some time with your class. And then the author of the book you are studying, the, of the text you're looking at, he begins to explain everything without even referring to the book. And he explains everything and breaks everything down. You will understand. And when the Almighty God Himself, who wrote the scriptures, all scripture, 
from Genesis to Revelation, given by the inspiration of God. And then it comes by spirit and it teaches you, you will understand. You'll understand salvation easy. You understand sanctification easy. You understand faith easy. You understand spiritual power easy. You understand everything that is meant to lift you up and to profit you. You will profit by the world. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, that the child of God may be perfect. However far you are from perfection now, you are moving towards perfection. Everything in your life, it will perfect everything concerning you. You will not be the same again. The challenges you face today, when God himself teaches you and exposes the word unto you, child of God, you'll be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Today, we're looking at the scriptures on the believer's profit and progress towards spiritual growth. The believer's profit and progress towards spiritual growth. Why is it some believers don't grow? Why is it some believers don't move forward? Why are they in church hearing all the messages and learning from all the Bible studies and yet they're not growing? The word of God will show us. And then all the hindrances will be taken away in Jesus' name. How is it some people just came not too long ago into the kingdom, into the church, and he started listening to the word not too far distance away, just recently, and yet their growth is surprising, and their growth is mind-boggling in prayer, in holiness, in evangelism, in faith, in power, in spiritual understanding, their growth surprises us. You discover from the world. What's the benefit? If we all learn from the Lord, and the Lord teaches us himself as we read the word, and receive the word. What are the things we're going to have? Your blessings will be uncountable. Three things we're looking at. Number one, hindrances to spiritual profit and progress. Hindrances to spiritual profit and progress. Point number two, honest hearts for spiritual promotion and power. Honest hearts for spiritual promotion and power. Number three, heavenly heights for the spiritually purposeful and prayerful. A person that has a goal, a person that has a purpose, and he says, I'm going to learn from the word of the Lord. And I'm going to allow the purpose of Christ at Calvary to be manifested in my life. And he prays in that direction. Heavenly heights, we will all gain in Jesus' name. Number one, hindrances to spiritual profit and 
progress. What hinders people? Why don't they make progress? Why do they always come to church? That's when they don't fail. But there's no evidence of salvation. There's no evidence of a new life. There's no evidence of true, genuine conversion. Why? They hear the same thing we're all hearing. They have the same Bible we all have. And the door of the church is not close to them. They come every time. What hinders the spiritual profit and the spiritual progress? Hebrews chapter 4. I read from verse 1, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it, almost getting it, but it eludes them. They feel like praying. In repentance but they don't carry through that prayer their mind is on another thing somewhere and they fall short of it verse 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them the word of salvation did not profit them. The word of holiness did not profit them. The word of faith did not profit them. The word of power did not profit them. It says the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. They didn't mix it with faith, accept it with faith, receive it with faith. The faith that helps you get saved, the faith that gets you sanctified, and the faith that gets the blessings and the wonders of God in our lives. You didn't have that faith. Look at chapter 5. In chapter 5, verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. There are people who are dull of hearing. When it comes to the scriptures, they are dull. When it comes to market, finance, whatever, they are sharp. When it comes to society and uh, community, they are sharp. When it comes to political ideas, the current affairs, they're sharp. Ask them whatever is happening. You don't even have to read the papers or listen to the news by yourself. They have everything at their fingertips. They're intelligent. But when it comes to the word of God, you wonder, how is it this person understands intricate things in the academics? But in the things of the Lord's salvation, he says, I just don't understand how you can have salvation and your life will totally change. I hear that person's testimony. I hear that person's testimony. But how can it be dull of hearing? Look at chapter 3. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. While they're in the presence of God and they're listening to God, the mind is far away, thousands of kilometers away. Their heart is far away, far away from the Lord. And although they are hearing sound, and they are hearing words, they do not benefit or profit from the word. There's an evil heart of unbelief. 
that they always go astray from the Lord. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. There are people that harden themselves because of the deceitfulness of sin. There is, um, you know, the world promising them something and the flesh promising them pleasure and the community promising them chieftaincy title and because of the deceitfulness of sin and self and Satan all combined together, the words they hear do not profit them. No change, no transformation. Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. You remember those early years when you first came to the Lord, the kind of passion and interest you had in the Word of God, and the kind of excitement you had when you hear some things taught for the first time, and the kind of prayer you prayed the first time when you heard the word of God it appeared your heart was going to break and you sobbed and you wept and you cried your hearts out and there was real repentance and there was real communication and consecration to the Lord and then you were growing fast but now you are not holding the beginning of your confidence steadfast and the end has not come yet. You are kind of here and there, haphazard, half-hearted. When you are hearing the word of God, you are wondering when are they going to finish so you can go and do some irrelevant, useless, unprofitable thing. But if you're going to benefit from the world and you're going to profit in the world, you will hold that same passion, that same pursuit, that same consecration, that same excitement, that same broken heart. You hold that fast till the very end. God will help us. The Lord will help me. James chapter 1, verse 8. Hindrances to spiritual profit and progress. James chapter 1, verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man. You ask them, where is your home church? Well, at present, I come to deeper life. What do you mean at present? Well, you know, I don't still know what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm a music lover, and I used to be a dancer before I started coming to this church. And when I came, Yes, I see the Bible read from cover to cover. It's like we're going to read the whole Bible in one message. But the music doesn't catch me. It doesn't make me feel like dancing. It doesn't make me feel like worshiping. It doesn't make me feel like, you know, this is it. Sing that again. Say that again. And beat that drum again. I want to hear the sound of the organ again. That thing is so soothing. I've not discovered that. And because I love music, or because I'm looking for my colleagues, I'm looking for rich people like myself, I'm looking for officials like myself, and I've not really found enough of them. I'm not sure yet. Well, I'm here now. 
who knows I might continue they are double minded they're not stable and it says they will be unstable in all their ways they cannot benefit they cannot profit in the world because their heart is not totally completely in the world I pray you'll not be double-minded I know about myself I am not double-minded I am here I am here if I'm coming on the way fire is burning I'll go through the fire and come to the church you didn't really say it for yourself if I'm coming and rain and storm pouring down I'll overlook the rain and the storm I will get to church if anything is happening they're distributing money naira pounds currency dollars on the side of the road and he said one great politician has said we should distribute to whosoever I will not wait there the love of money is the root of all evil I will be in church I said I will be in church some people are by the side of the road and they are dancing and jubilating and all that and they are mentioning the name of Jesus and somebody is carrying the Bible and waving the Bible I'm coming to church I'm not going to be distracted by those people I will get to church talk for yourself do so a double minded oh well why go far to church something is happening there they're calling the name of Jesus there and they're beating drums there and they're doing some miracles there they branch and they fall by the wayside but anytime you come you'll always find me in church say it now why are some people not profited? Jeremiah chapter 2. I read from verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and healed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. There are some people who find alternatives to the name of Jesus. They abandon the name of Jesus, they take an alternative. There are some people who find alternatives to the power of the Holy Ghost. They abandon the power of the Holy Ghost and they, uh, they jump on another scene. They hewn to themselves, they cut out for themselves broken cisterns that can hold no water and they hold on to a superficial doctrine that cannot take them to heaven I will not be distracted I say chapter 29 I read from verse 13 I say 29 verse 13 Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, and with their leaves do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Their testimonies are loud. Their communications or declarations are high. Their so-called promises, I promise the Lord I'll never leave him. Very great, high sounding. But their heart is far from the Lord. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. Therefore, behold, 
I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. Those who try to approach God with human wisdom. That wisdom will fail. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who sees us and who knows us. Those people who hide their ways from the Lord, they hide their plans from the Lord, they hide their deeds, their actions from the Lord, and they perpetrate evil in the dark. And they say, who sees us? Those people never benefit from the word of God. But the people who open themselves to God, who expose themselves to God, who require, who demand, who ask, who pray, for through and total cleansing by the Lord, those are the people who profit. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel 33. Reading from verse 31. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they siege before thee as my people. They hear thy words, but they will not do them. They pile up message after message. They hear message after message. Instead of committing themselves to obey and to do the work and the word of God, they're busy judging. Why that? Why that? Why this? They hear the word, but they will not do them. But with their mouths, they show much love. But their heart goes after their covetousness. Their heart goes after their covetousness. And lo, verse 32, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. That explains why they are the way they are. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, free from sin, free from evil, free from transgression, free from satanic influence. But they are ever learning, ever hearing, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that sets us free. That's why many people allow hindrances and they cannot profit by the word and they cannot make progress in hearing the word. But God will favor you. You will profit by the teaching of the word. I will profit. That means you'll be saved, you'll be victorious over sin. 
that means to be sanctified and purified in all your ways. That means your life will reflect the teaching and the doctrine of the word of God in every area of your life. It will happen. Point number two, honest hearts for spiritual promotion and power. Honest hearts for spiritual promotion and power. In Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart. In the matter of the heart, it's not just dragging yourself to the church. It's not just having a copy of the Bible. It is not just reading the Bible. It's not just hearing all the great doctrines of the Bible. It's a matter of the heart that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. They hear the word, they store the word in their hearts, they meditate on the word in their hearts, they pray on the words in their hearts, and the power of the grace of God works on their hearts, and it says they keep the word, they obey the word, and bring forth fruit with patience. When the Lord deals with our hearts, we will profit by the word. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Reading from verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. It's the work of the Lord. And it's the work of grace. That God himself. And that's not done corporately. Circumcision is one by one. The Lord thy God, that means first of all you are saved, is thy God. That means you are already born again, is the Lord thy God. That means your sins are forgiven and you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and you have entered into the kingdom, is the Lord thy God. After he has become the Lord your God and you have evidence of being born into the family of God. After that, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. And what's the result? After you are circumcised in the heart to love the Lord thy God. You will love his nature. You will love his attributes. You will love his word. You will love his heaven. You will love everything that belongs to the Lord. You will love the day of worship, worshiping the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You will love everything that is of God. And you will hate with perfect hatred everything that is of the devil. It's such a heart that will have profit, progress, promotion, and power. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live that you may live, and that one is more than just living physically, that you may live with him in heaven. You love him without reservation. There are some people, they say they love the Lord. They have 
their reservations. I will follow the Lord. I will love the Lord. And I will go this far and no more. You don't love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. You love the Lord without reservation. You love the Lord without a rival. There'll be nobody, a man or a woman, that will rival the love of God in your heart. And there'll be no material sin, there'll be no ideology that will compete with the love of God in your heart, in your life. You love him with your heart, you love him with all your soul, that thou mightest live. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Honest hearts for spiritual promotion and spiritual power. Ezekiel 36, 26. In your heart also will I give you, and in your spirit will I put within you. I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. We wouldn't have known if God didn't reveal that there is a heart like stone. What's the implication of that? When you pour water on stone, it just goes up. It doesn't enter. It doesn't penetrate. And the same thing, there are hearts that the water of the world does not penetrate, does not enter. And they hear and hear and hear. And they're saying, I don't know why I'm like this. If I were to write, all that I've been hearing in a book, I'll fill many volumes of books. But even though I've had all that, it doesn't appear to be inside my heart. It doesn't penetrate. I don't know why. The why, the reason is, it's a stony heart. And the water of the word does not penetrate. And so that's why God said he's going to perform an operation. But you know, if you are going to perform, you are going to have an operation. While the doctor is getting you ready, you say, doctor, please hold on. My time is up. Doctor says, I'm the one to measure the time. He says, no. I plan to be in this place for this time. The time is up for me. I go. He comes again, and the doctor is wondering whether I will have enough time at this time. And once he gets to a particular point, he says, you know, doctor, I don't know. The condition of my body doesn't wait until this time. He goes off again. There are people that come to church. They hear the word of God. They might hear it for one hour, for one and a half hours, whatever. And then at the time when God is to perform the operation in their heart, and God is going to remove the stony heart and bring in a heart of flesh, their time is over. God does not dictate time for them. They dictate time to God. They are gone. And they do like that every time. You will not be like that. I will not be like that. Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away. He will take it away. He will take it away. The stony heart is the hard heart. It's the hardened heart. It's the stubborn heart. It's the adamant heart. It's the incorrigible heart. It's the same today as it was yesterday. But God says, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Any amen on that side? 
Hebrews chapter 8. In Hebrews chapter 8, I read from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 8, we're reading from verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, here is the word of the Lord. Here is the desire of the Lord. Here is what he wants to do. He says, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. When God first wrote his laws in the first covenant, he wrote upon the stone. Moses was there on the mount with him. And God got the stones and he was writing his law on the stone. Moses did not take the stone away from him before he finished writing. Moses did not say, God, I've been here now for this many days. I've not eaten, I've not drunk any water. And you have not finished writing? Give me what you have written. That's enough. Moses did not say that. He waited for those 40 days on the mount without eating, without drinking. And he waited for God to write his law on the stone. And he brought it to the children of Israel. But the commandments were unattainable. They were on the stone far away from them. And he didn't eat work. They broke all those commandments. And God now says, I'm going to do it differently. There's going to be a new covenant. And I will write my law. The same God that wrote on the tables of stone and I want to write on the heart. But you must stay with him. You're safe, stay with him. He wants to operate on your heart, stay with him. He wants to write the word in your heart, stay with him. It's not a brain matter, it's a heart matter. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I'll be to them their God, and they shall be to me my people. The Lord will do it. When he does it, he'll purify our hearts. Actually, that's what it takes to get to heaven. We're looking at Psalm 24. Psalm 24. I read from verse 3 and verse 4. Psalm 24, verse 3. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He's talking about those who will get to heaven. Who are they? The people that come to Deep Line Bible Church? Uh-uh. It's more than that. The people that are workers and ministers in Deep Line Bible Church? Hey, it's greater than that. He that has clean hands that's what to get to heaven clean hands his hands will not touch anything that would defile him his hands is not sticky to take money from a place he has not sold to take money from the office without consent or permission of the people who are in charge. He that has clean hands, his hands are not defiled with women or with men. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, salvation, clean hands, pure heart, sanctification, holiness of heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Matthew 
chapter 5, verse 8. Matthew 5, we're reading from verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. It will purify our hearts. You know, it's more than just preaching. Let's say somebody's a preacher. He knows the Bible, reads the Bible, teaches the Bible, explains the Bible, and he sets the doctrine line by line, one after the other. But after preaching, when he's by himself, privately, he's going through those pornographies on the internet. And he's looking at what he shouldn't be looking at. His heart is not pure. His heart is polluted. And he himself will know that he is a big zero, a big hypocrite. He knows the Bible, but his heart goes after the things of the flesh. And he might even mess up himself while looking at those messy things. But it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's my purpose. That's my goal. I will see God. If you're going to see God even here on earth in prayer, you'll be pure in heart. Pornography will not be any part of your life, any time, any night, any private time. Psalm 73. In Psalm 73, I'm reading from verse 24. Psalm 73, verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. That somebody who is being taught by the Lord. And unto what receive me to glory, whom have I in heaven but thee? Whom have I in heaven but thee? He wants to get to heaven. He wants to see the Almighty God. He's not interested in seeing whosoever, whatsoever, when he gets to heaven. He wants to see God. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. None on earth, nothing on earth, no one on earth that he desires more than God beside the Lord. He loves the Lord. He's fond of the Lord. The Lord is his companion all the time. And he never allows any man on earth, any woman on earth to come between him and God, to come between her and God. He doesn't allow any material thing, any possession, any amount of money to come between him and the Almighty God, to come between her and the Almighty God, whom have I in heaven but thee. And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And my portion forever. Such people, they love the Lord so much. They're not in a hurry to get away from the presence of God and to be talking idle talks after service. In Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verse 28, As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. Those who are not in a hurry, 
to run, to flee the house of God, to escape from the touch of God. And they love the Lord so much, they abide in His presence. And they want the Lord to perform the spiritual operation in their heart. He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. The prayerless youths will faint and be weary. The talkative youths will faint and be weary. The incorrigible youths will faint and be weary. The youths that pay more attention to the study of mathematics and English and chemistry and physics more than they pay to the word of God they will faint and be weary the youths that do not count salvation as important as success they will faint and be weary but they that wait upon the Lord youths who wait upon the Lord Men and women who wait upon the Lord, they that wait. That spirit of the world that is always running and running and running, even away from the presence of God, that spirit of the world that Satan has put in every person that goes to different churches and denominations that when they hear the word of the lord they cannot wait even the preachers themselves they cannot wait if they are preaching they can preach they can preach they can preach but when another person is preaching and they have to pray and wait upon the lord they cannot wait that spirit of hurry, that spirit of running that will not make people to come in the presence of God and wait that spirit the Lord will take away from every heart. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Look up here, look up here. I'm looking at the past before me. And I'm looking at a lot of things that I still need to do. And I want to run. I'm going to run. Somebody there said, I'm going to run. I about your age, I about your gray hair, I about your strength, God, is renewing my strength. God is empowering me. And God is giving me the vision of the eagle. And the power of the Holy Ghost will revive anything that is getting weak in my body, in my life, in Jesus' name. I will wait on the Lord. I will run, I will not be weary. I will wait on the Lord and I will walk and I will not faint. I pass it on to you. Yeah. You will be strong. Yeah. You will be stronger. Yeah. And you will have more strength than you ever had all the years of your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Heart attack will not hold you. Yeah. Palpitation of the heart will not hold you. Weariness will not hold you. The spirit of hurry, hurry, hurry will not destroy you. You will wait on the Lord and the Lord will renew your strength in Jesus' name. Satan will not hinder you. The world will not hinder you. And any other personality, principalities and powers, they will not hinder you in Jesus' name. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. 
We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and will not faint. I will not faint. I will not faint. Everything that makes people to faint out of your life in Jesus' name. Point number three, heavenly heights for the spiritually purposeful and prayerful. Heavenly heights, heavenly heights. You have heard about the ladder that went from the earth to heaven. And Jacob saw the angels coming up and down. And Jesus said hereafter, you will see the heavens opened and angels coming and going upon the Son of Man. Your ladder is available now. Yeah. They are going to climb up. Yeah. You will climb every mountain. Yeah. You will cross every sea. Yeah. Every impotency in your life will be turned to power. Every impossibilities in your life will be turned to possibilities. Every challenge you are going to cross over. Heavenly heights for the spiritually purposeful and prayerful. Your purpose must align with the purpose of God. When your purpose aligns with the purpose of God, then it will fulfill that purpose because it's in line with the purpose of God. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14 verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Yes, a purpose in your life. Yes, a purpose in my life. And as he has purposed, so it will stand. Verse 27. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? His hand is stretched out, who shall turn it back? What the Lord has decided to do in your life will be done. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah. Chapter 46, verse 11. Calling a ravenous bird from the east. The man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it and I will bring it to pass. Your life glory has come yeah. upliftment has come yeah. spiritual vibrancy vitality has come yeah. I have spoken it and I will bring it to pass I have purposed it and I will also do it yeah. I'm looking at your life a brighter life a greater life, yeah. a higher life, yeah. a deeper life, yeah. a stronger life. Yeah. The Lord has purposed it in your life. It will be done. Yeah. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. I read from verse 16. Acts. 26 verse 16 but rise and stand 
on your feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of the things which thou hast seen and of the things in the which I will appear unto thee. The Lord is appearing to you today for a purpose and that purpose is going to be fulfilled. You will not be a purposeless man. You will not be a purposeless woman. You will not be a purposeless youth. Your life will have direction. Your life will have destination. Your life will have heavenly heights in Jesus' name. You see, the people who don't have any purpose, they are the people who meander. They are here, they're there, they go through that corner, and they're hiding somewhere, they're under the bridge, they're under, they're somewhere. There's no purpose. And they cannot account for their days. But for a man of purpose, a woman of purpose, a boy, a girl of purpose, every day counts. Every moment counts. And it says, a part of the purpose is not fulfilled today, that day is lost. But no day will be lost in your life. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8. Verse 28, for we know that all things work together for good in your life. This day, anything that happens, stop using the word negative, positive, bad, good. I'm discouraged, I'm disappointed you will not be discouraged. There's no disappointment in your life. Everything that happens, Satan may even be the one behind that thing. It will work for good in your life. An enemy may be behind that thing. It will be for good in your life. Somebody said, I am delayed. I should have got there. I didn't get there. Every delay will work for good in your life. Somebody said they hate me. The brothers of Joseph hated him and they sold him. And Potiphar's wife told a lie against him. And he went to the prison. All those things collect everything together. Everything brought him to the throne. Everything that happens to you. Coming from there, coming from there, the frowns of men, the smiles of men, the slap of men, the insult from men, the assault from men, everything that happens to you, the day has come, everything will work for good. Look at verse 28, and we know you will know. You will testify. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Look at this, look at this. To them who are the called according to tell me his purpose. He has a purpose for your life. And because he has a purpose, that's why everything will work for good. I used to wonder, why did that happen? I used to think, how could that happen to me? You know, I go back many, many years, and I still remember the story of my life. From the 40s, I'm surprised I remember. To the 50s, I'm surprised I remember. To the 60s, I'm surprised I remember. I can even see some of the locations where some of those things happen. And to the 70s, I still remember. To the 80s and the 90s, and to the first uh, decade in, uh, you know, the 21st century, and then to this time. But now I'm thanking God. 
I said now I'm thanking God you will thank God you will praise God because there is a divine purpose in your life and that divine purpose will be fulfilled first John chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 8 first John chapter 3 verse 8 he that committed sin is of the devil not me I said not me sin is gone I don't have time for that anymore you don't have time for that anymore that's anybody sinning is gambling with the purpose of God in his life gambling with the goal and destiny of God in his life thank God I've graduated from that area I said I've graduated from that area sin will not have dominion over you he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning and then it says for this purpose purpose for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil every work of the devil in your life totally defeated and destroyed whosoever is born of god does not commit sin i will not commit sin whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for the seed of god remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god now god has a purpose for your life do you believe that? Do you accept that? And now your own purpose must align with the purpose of God. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. Daniel chapter 1. Verse Tell me the verse. Look at it. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart. He was in Babylon. Doesn't matter where you go to. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter where you're walking. Doesn't matter the village, the town you come from. Doesn't matter the school you attend. It may be the poorest of all schools. God's purpose for creating you and for redeeming you will still be fulfilled. But Daniel in Babylon purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You will not be defiled. Purpose from heaven upon your life will be fulfilled. You are a man, a woman, a boy, a girl of destiny. Say, I mean, if you're a man, woman, boy, girl, I am a man of destiny. I am a man of destiny. I'm not just here. Say that. I am not an accident. God sent me to this world. And he has a purpose for my life that purpose will be fulfilled the sea may roar the enemies may rise persecutors may come on board yet i'm a man of purpose my destiny will not be sidetracked 
as you know you are a man, a woman, a boy, a girl of purpose. Now look at what God is saying. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 37. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I have a purpose for the Jews. I have a purpose for Israel. I declare that purpose and no one can annul or cancel that purpose. Yet I will for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. He has a purpose for you. He has a goal for you. He has a destiny for you. Yet, you must ask the Lord in prayer. Already, he wants to do it. So it's not like it's a long time. And he wants to start a new thing in your life, even from this very day. I said in your life in this very day. But he says, yet, yet, I must be inquired of by the people to do it for them. Are you ready? Are you going to flee from the house of God? Are you going to run outside just doing something and having idle talk outside? Tell me, tell me. Are you one of the people that will wait on the Lord today? Are you one of the people that will pray today? Are you one of the people that will support the heavenly purpose with an earthly prayer? Are you? Are you? Rise up and pray. Forget about every other sin now and understand that God wants to promote you to heights and he wants to give you the promotion, the profit, the progress. He wants to give you the power and the purity, the purpose of your life to be fulfilled. Back it up with prayer. Back it up with prayer. Back it up with prayer. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If you are weak, this is the day to be strong. They shall run and they shall not faint. If you are fainting, this is the time for heavenly energy to be injected into your life. He loves you more than you can tell. He's been waiting for you to do something more than what you expect or desire. Heaven's smile is upon your life. Heaven's goodness is available for you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. No sin is too big for God to forgive. No fault is so great for God to wipe away. No transgression is so surpassing for him to wipe away. But you must wait upon the Lord. You must call upon him. You must pray unto him. You'll be merry going round for a long time at the same level, at the same spot, under the same yoke, under the same weakness, under the same fainting. Make it a day with the Lord, a day to rise. A day to be strong, a day to be forgiven, a day to be saved, 
whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved a day to be purified and crucified and sanctified self crucified heart purified your spirit sanctified say day to overcome every mountain every mountain you feared in the past a day to come to the realization I'll fly over that mountain I fly over that Red Sea I fly over that river Jordan enemies that stand in the way persecutors persecution standing in the way I'll mount up with wings as eagles I fly over go up go up go up until the people on the ground cannot see you anymore you vanish out of their sight sickness will not tie you down sickness will not stop the destiny of God in your life infirmity will not stop your productivity you'll mount up with wings as eagles you will not be tired you will not be weary you will not faint victory must come today that overcoming strength must come today the purpose of God is that sin will not have dominion over you pray and achieve that purpose the purpose of God is that your weakness will not take the better part of your life pray and achieve that purpose they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings as eagles you're on the race that is set before you. No power can stop you. No mediocre can stop you. No failure can stop you. The past will not spoil your present. When God forgives, He forgets. He forgives. He cleanses. He washes whiter than snow. He'll cleanse you. He'll purge you. He'll purify you. He'll sanctify you believe and it will happen God has purposed and no one can annul or cancel that purpose let your prayer agree with the purpose of God let your prayer affirm the purpose of God will give you victory over your past weaknesses 
strength is coming. See your heart already. The believer's authority that's in you already, the anointing that breaks every yoke, that's yours already. You can be more than a conqueror today. An overcomer, a victorious believer, avoid what hinders people from profiting in the teaching of the Word of God. You will not be dull of hearing. You will not be negligent of the word. It will mix your faith in your heart. Whatever you have confessed and forsaken, make up your mind by the help of the Lord you will not go back to them anymore. You will not go back to swallow your vomit anymore. He set me free. He set me free. Remain free. Abide in his freedom. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. After praying and receiving the blessing of God, we don't go out and engage in idle talks. Live sapping conversations. Time wasting discussions. After being freed, we don't get under the yoke anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious conquering people of God said, yeah. I rejoice with you, you have a testimony. Yeah. Life will not be the same anymore. Yeah. Everything that conquered you in the past, you are going to conquer from this moment. Yeah. Henceforth, victory. Henceforth, you are an overcomer. Henceforth, healing and health. Henceforth, deliverance and dominion. Henceforth, heavenly heights in Jesus' name. The purpose of God, the destiny of the Lord for your life is fulfilled already in Jesus' name. God has answered your prayer. Raise up those hands in praise to God. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name that you have taught us by your spirit. And we're going to profit by everything we've heard. All hindrances to progress and profit come out of their lives in Jesus' name. All weakness and weariness come out of their lives in Jesus' name. Oppression, affliction, come out in Jesus' name. All those who have been going around and going around like the Israelites journey, and they are stuck in one place. Lord, break every chain from their leg. Remove every fetter from their lives. 
and all the seas that make them backslide, backslide, backslide. From today, we we'll say no. Yes. Cleanse them as you forgive them in Jesus' name. Yes. The power to go and see no more. Grind to everyone in Jesus' name. Yes. Purify every heart. Yes. Circumcise every heart. Yes. Sanctify every heart. Yes. And make everyone, everyone, everyone to love you with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, that they will live a spectacular life in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray no power will conquer any of your people. They will tread on serpents and scorpions. In the day, they will have the victory. In the dream, they will have the victory. At work, they will have the victory. In the marketplace, they will have the victory. And in the spiritual life, they will have the victory. Principalities and powers will be destroyed before them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you give all your people the spirit of prayer. That every mountain they speak against, that mountain will move. Every useless tree that is not planted by the Almighty God, they speak against, will dry up from the roots. Lord, fulfill the destiny of your people. Bring joy. Bring happiness. Give testimony. And let life be exciting from now on. Go in the strength of the Lord. From victory to victory. From power to power. From grace to grace. You will not feel powerless anymore. The joy of the Lord be your strength all your days. Confirm, 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 confirm your blessings upon every life irrevocably in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.